How's it going YouTube? Cody Bernardi here with another YouTube video. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with all of you uh, some OSINT tools that I use on a frequent basis. Now, if you're unfamiliar with OSINT, OSINT stands for Open Source Intelligence. And basically what it is, is just very advanced Google searching. Now, obviously it's a little bit more than just Google searching. However, it is just finding data that is on the internet or publicly available to build some sort of profile on a person or in organization. So without further ado, I have a giant list of items to cover. So I'm just gonna get straight into it. So huge shout out to Lockfail and Justin Nordine for putting together the OSINT framework. A lot of the stuff I'm talking about in here is on the OSINT framework. So please check that out and give a thanks to Justin Nordine. And also check out this book by Michael Bazell. He actually just came out with his new version. I have the sixth edition, but I think he just came out with the seventh edition. It's called Open Source Intelligence Techniques. So I would definitely recommend getting that book. It's on Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description for that. So here's the OSINT framework. The second site that I use is for username enumeration. Typically when I'm doing a recon on someone or a business, they will typically use the same username across all of their social media. Uh, so in this case, Justin Bieber or whatever, but it's going to check to see if that username exists on WordPress, eBay, Instagram, Facebook, blah, 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 blah. So just searching Justin Bieber, we see that it's taken on Facebook, taken on YouTube, it's taken on Twitter. Click on this, it'll take us to the Twitter link and Justin Bieber, there you go. So you could do this when, if you have like a person in mind that you're doing intelligence on. So first one, namecheck.com. The second one is noam.com, which again is pretty much the same thing. It's checking Twitter and Facebook and Tumblr and all that. Uh, so noam.com. Uh, the third site on here is thatsthem.com. Uh, this site is ridiculously powerful. Uh, you just search someone's full name and, and kind of the city or state that they live in. And it, it does a lot of work for you. It aggregates relatives. I don't know where it pulls the, the data for things like net worth and such like that, but shows phone numbers, IP addresses, and, and email addresses that are associated with you. So that's them.com is insane. I, this is probably the first place I go to if I'm checking anything. Another site where the, the fourth site we're talking about is metricsparrow.com. So Metric Sparrow, this tool, the email permulator, basically you type in someone's name uh, and then maybe a do in the domain name and it gives you the various kinds of email formats businesses use. So it's usually like first name dot last name at company name dot com or first initial last name company dot com. If we do John Jodo uh, uh, shit. Dot com. We will permulate and there we go doe-j at shit.com and so on and so forth. Highlights everything for you so possible uh, usernames which will lead into the next uh, tool is verify email. Uh, so you'll type in an email address and I believe it hits MX servers at uh, a business. Not too entirely sure so apologies for that but you'll type in an email and see if it exists. Have I been pwned.com. This site's pretty good with tracking public breaches on stuff like Ashley Madison, Sony, you name it, it's in here. So you type in an email address and I actually talk about this tool on making a really secure password. Uh, have I been pwned? Just the website. You type in your email address or someone else's email address to see if it's been in a public breach such as the ones I just mentioned before. This website is a complete profile of all the emails associated with the Ashley Madison hack. Uh, I think was back in 2016, 2015 or whatever. Uh, but you just throw in an email address in there and see if it's been uh, part of that breach. I believe it's been, it was a couple million that were breached. So yeah, that's all the OSINT tools that I use for email enumeration. Now we're moving over to DNS. Now DNS is domain name service or server. Uh, so the first site that I use for enumeration of subdomains and other like name servers and MX servers and TXT files is dnsdumpster.com. This site is so crazy and it's so easy to use. So we'll just do google.com. So I use DNS dumpster when I do recon on bug bounties. I just throw a domain in there and it just pops a bunch of uh, subdomains. So I typed in google.com, 
So we get things like DNS servers, so name servers, all for name servers, MX records, so that's mail server records, TXT records, and then A records, so google.com, and all these proxies and such like that. So what I do in this case is when I get all of these subdomains, I, I download them into a CSV file where I nmap uh, all of these subdomains uh, to get their IP addresses. So I do a reverse DNS, take that, those IP addresses, scan them through mass scan, scan all the ports, output that to a greppable format, and then run nmap against it for a more fine on off check on these IP addresses. So I don't know how many are in here. I believe just going on DNS dumpster for free, you only get 100 A records. And if you want to get a full 501, you have to pay. So 100 is pretty good if you're just doing recon on a you know smaller business. The next one is sublister.com. This is a tool that you run on Linux. Again, it's kind of similar to DNS dumpster. So it, it checks Baidu, Yahoo, Google, at, you know, all of these various different search engines and it basically compiles a subdomain list for you. So the next one is Photon. It finds fuzzable links. So it's like fuckyou.com slash question mark PHP whatever var variable equals blah, blah, blah. And it, and it tells you fuzzable links. So Photon. Uh, you run Photon and it throws everything into like the domain name's own folder within the directory you're running Photon in. So Photon is awesome. I use it a lot. Uh, so the next one is Recon NG. This one, again, similar to what we were talking about before. It's doing reconnaissance on websites. It's built into Kali. Uh, so go ahead and check that out. So if you have Kali, uh, run the man page against it. So the next one is census.io. So we will take up 8.8.8.8, .8 Google DNS, and it gives us some information about that IP address. So DNS Twist, this tool is pretty cool uh, for typo squatting. So basically what it's doing is like you take something like google.com, you got the two O's, you'll replace one of the O's with a zero or something like that. So it's it's basically like lead speak ish yeah, I won't say exactly like lead speak, but it's similar to that. The next one is robots disallowed. If you guys are unfamiliar with robots.txt, a lot of big websites, they have youtube.com slash robots.txt. So robots.txt is basically kind of a way that a website says, hey, Google crawler or Baidu or whatever crawler, you can search these directories, but don't search these directories. It's so silly from an attacker's perspective. If you disallow a crawler to search a certain directory, I'm going to crawl it manually myself to see what's in there because I'm nosy. So we're checking out uh, twitter.com slash robots. Yeah, TXT. It says allow and then the star is kind of a wild card. So anything can really go in there and it says disallow slash star question mark and so on and so forth. It's kind of a giant list of things found in a robots.txt. And you could just run this list in something like burp suite, burp intruder, and just run this list through it and see what see what comes up. So the next one we're gonna talk about is Shodan.io. Shodan is my favorite website on the internet. It is basically the Google of search engines. So think of it as like you throw in google.com or organization or whatever you want. I'll make a whole video about Google dorking and Shodan sometime soon. Shodan is an amazing tool. So now that we've talked about a lot about DNS, we're gonna talk about images. So if you have an image of something or someone and you wanna find a quick way to verify if it's real or if it's been used anywhere else, Google images, you could just drag and drop an image and, and you can see if it's been used on other websites. It might help to crop the picture a little bit to get exactly what you want. So Google images, the next one is 10i.com. Again, this is probably the best one of them all, uh, but it, you just upload an image. You might have to crop it again, uh, but it tells you other sites that that image has been used on. Next one is XF, XF tool by by Phil Harvey. It's basically pulling metadata of photos or any files. So like a photo tells you like might have the coordinates of where that photo was taken or the time that photo was taken or what camera that photo was taken and so on and so forth. So XF tool, uh, you can run it on Windows, Mac OS and Linux, I believe. So it's pretty cool just getting uh, metadata out of photos and such like that. So now we're gonna be moving over to transportation. So flightaware.com is awesome. I'm a, what do you call it? A plane head? I don't know. We, we just, it, my girlfriend and I, we just enjoy photos. We enjoy Air Force Proud 95 and everything about airplanes. So this allows you to track planes via tail number, origin and destination and such oh, like that. Tail number. 
yeah, everything. You can track anything and everything on there. So flightaware.com. Now this one, ADBS Exchange. This one is a little bit better-ish uh, than FlightAware because some jets uh, or owners of jets, they do not want things like FlightAware to track their their planes and such like that. However, there's no law saying they have to, to abide by that. So ADBS Exchange has no filters. If you have a transponder turned on and you're beaconing out, you're gonna be tracked on ADBS Exchange and it has a pretty cool archive and you can see previous flights. Um, it is not as accurate, I believe, I, I've just seen sometimes in the past, it's not as accurate as like things like FlightAware, but it's fucking awesome. So if you're tracking someone high profile and they have, you know, Instagram photos with their tail number in the back of their private jet and they ask, you know, FlightAware to not track, come here, you can track it. So. Moving on, jetphotos.com. Now this site is fucking sweet again because I love planes. Uh, you could take photos, upload it to Jet Photos, and you type in information like the tail number, where it was seen, and so on and so forth like that. So again, you could, if you're tracking someone high profile, you throw in the tail number of their jet and you could see where they go. The next one is n2yo.com, which is tracking live satellites. Now for doing OSINT on a person, really doesn't matter that much if you're tracking satellites, but pretty cool tool nonetheless. It tells you longitude, latitude, speed, elevation. So I don't use it that much, but it's a pretty cool site nonetheless. This next tool we're gonna to be talking about, suncalc.org. Now this site is, <laughs> it's pretty dirty when you're doing some OSINT investigations. So let's say you're investigating an incident and you see shadows in a photo. Well, you we can calculate what time of day the photo was taken, possibly where the photo was taken, simply due because of the shadows. And you can use a site like suncalc.org. So next up on the list is Google Maps. Google Maps, I'm sure all of us have heard of it, used it. It's sweet. So if you're using something like I talked about in a previous video where we're using wiggle.net, a location of SSID, take the, the coordinates, throw it into Google Maps, street view, now you get an image of the building. So Google Maps. So outside of Google Maps, there is Bing Maps. Again, people shit on Bing, I know, but Bing's map tool is awesome because they have the bird's eye view, which is basically, I think it's just a plane flying over wherever and it's like, from a plane's perspective of stuff on the ground. It's awesome. Next up is Yandex. Uh, Yandex is a Russian web mapping service. It's just another thing to use. It's based out of Russia. So if you're doing something in that area, Yandex is the thing to use. Next one, uh, let's see, Baidu. So Baidu, again, it's the Chinese variant of Google. So again, check that out. Okay, so now we're going to code searching. Now, what is code searching? It's basically searching for pieces of code on the internet. If you're interested in looking at where this code is deployed, what's the blast radius and such like that. So let's get straight into it. So GitHub, github.com has an awesome code search. You just type on the top left what you wanna search and uh, search whatever string of code, put it in quotes if it's a specific string, like search equals blah, whatever. Whatever you want to do. Next one is public www.com. It searches HTML on websites, CSS, JavaScript, and so on and so forth. And they give you some examples down here. Search websites that are using your Google tracker and such like that. Next up is archives. So archiving is pretty important for just maintaining the history of the web. So waybackmachine.com, you could type in like CNN, Dot com and we could go all the way back to 2001 and this is important if you're doing an investigation and you're worried that your target is going to remove or do anything like that you want to archive that just in case anything gets uh, manipulated on the website so archive everything the wayback machine actually has a uh, at least a firefox i know that much but you can archive web pages just by clicking on the add-on so we'll go to September 11th, 2001, and see what CNN looked like that day. So there we go. This is what CNN.com looked like on September 11th at 4.07 p.m. Eastern time. This is exactly what it looked like. Okay, next up on archive is archive.is or archive.today. You just type in a URL that you wanna archive and it saves it for you and all of the files within it. So, okay, so last page, whew. File checking. So if you have a file that you're kind of suspicious about, virustotal.com is a place that I go. 
Uh, however, keep in mind, if you upload a file to VirusTotal.com, you are uploading that file to VirusTotal.com and anyone can access it. So if it's a confidential file with PII or whatever info in it, don't upload to VirusTotal. Uh, but you could check hashes, uh, URL, and files and see if it's been triggered as a malicious file on various uh, AV. Next up is Ghidra. This is a tool built and maintained by the NSA, but it is open source. I, I have personally not used Ghidra, uh, but I've heard amazing things about it. So Ghidra is a tool that you can use for, uh, I think, binary analysis. I'm not too entirely sure. Okay, so it's a reverse engineering framework, basically. Uh, say. Next up is exploits. So this is where you can find exploits for various things. ExploitDB.com. It's kind of the go-to for everything outside of Metasploit. So Mac OS 10.14.6, root kernel privilege escalation via update DYLD shared cache. And it's by Google only assuming uh, project zero. Uh, next one is not on ClearNet. It's on Tor, so oday.today. Again, this is where a lot of odays get dropped. Um, just a bunch of odays that you can buy. There's a lot of free ones too. So let's go on to intelligence. So graynoise.io is pretty sweet. It is just a website that has honeypots deployed all around the world and it just checks for mass scanning activities. Uh, it's funny that I had one of my uh, digital ocean droplets. I installed mass scan on it and I just started, started mass scanning port 3389, AKA RDP. And I looked at my IP on here and it was flagged as a known mass scanner as well as on Shodan. Shodan has a built-in plug from gray, gray noise and it tags it as a known mass scanner or something like that. So it gives you awesome threat intel feeds. It's up to date within the past 24 hours. Next up is MITRE.org. So MITRE, I, I believe it's MITRE and NIST that issue at CVEs. CVE stands for Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. It's basically, there's a vulnerability and it has an assigned ID to it. So it's usually CVE, the year, and then just some random number after that. So this is a place to check for CVEs and vulnerabilities associated with any sort of products you might be wanting to exploit. So there would be CVEs for Nmap, there's CVEs for Apache, there's CVEs for iPhone, you name it, there's probably a CVE for it. So MITRE.org and then NIST.org or gov, something like that. Some, some tools that I use uh, to just kind of gather information. So Hunchly is an awesome built-in tool for, for Google, Google Chrome, and Firefox. I don't have it right now. I had it when I took the SAN Sec487 course. It, it just captures everything you're doing, your clicks, screen record, and all that. Uh, so definitely check out Hunchly. And then the last one that I want to talk about is Paterva Maltego. Uh, Maltego, oh, I can't talk enough about Maltego. Maltego is you throw in an IP address and it runs a bunch of transforms. I don't know exactly what it's checking. It's probably a bunch of APIs, but it's like you throw in an IP address and it tells you a lot of things associated with it. And you can make arrows, make a map of kind of how everything works. I use this personally for just mapping out how everything connects to one another. Uh, so there is a free version, a community edition. There's also paid versions. Uh, but Maltego is a fucking sweet tool. With that, that is all I have for this video. So a lot of the, there's only one site on here that's not clear net. Everything else is clear net. If you could, please give this video a like, subscribe, and share it with all your friends that are interested in, in open source intelligence or anything like that. Um, and again, thank you for watching and have a good day.